Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live, Wednesday night edition. Yes, yes, yes. As you can see, it's myself, my main man, Transformer, and my brother, G. What's good, y'all? What's happening? Chief. <laughs> All right, all right. So we're gonna uh we're gonna hold up here, wait a couple minutes, see what we get in the uh see what we get in the chat, and then uh we are going to get it rolling. I think we got some uh we got some pretty official topics here for y'all. We got uh we got some good quick hits and we're gonna try to keep them quick. And then uh as you can see, we will do our our normal, our uh Wednesday night special to to pick them, see how that goes, and then uh we'll we'll talk about the Ravens and uh we won't go crazy, but we will talk about the Ravens. I'm keeping y'all on the time of the day. <laughs> and then we got um, Adam Silver. That should be interesting. And then uh, a little college football, which we don't normally talk on this show, but we're going to talk about Dion, Coach Prime, and, and those Buffaloes of his because um, yeah. it's looking real interesting. I think when, whenever you're talking Dion, man, it's bigger than college. I mean, that's just sports. Yeah, it could be right? interesting. What up, yeah. Bruce? No, we do not need G on his BS tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need nobody on no BS tonight. But we going we got a good show for y'all, man. We we gonna do that though. <laughs> uh, we gonna make it. We gonna make it. <laughs> oh my goodness. We gonna make it. We yes, we are. Yes, we it. are. Oh, yeah, I know what I was about to talk about. What's up, G? Stephen A, man. You think he got something against Lamar? Too soon, too soon, too soon, too soon, too soon. Yeah, no, that's not how we start the show. That's not how we start the show. That's not how we start the show. We're going to right, right. talk about LeBron, then y'all want to talk about LeBron? No, no, not even. That's 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 Bruce's that's alley, later, bro. bro. That's later. No, oh. oh, man. Let's talk about right. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. No, no, no. Pat Riley getting a statue in front of uh the stadium. I think that's yeah, the, that's dope. Yeah, that's definitely that one of the quick hits. We're gonna hit that. It that's is dope, dope man. man. We'll talk about that. All right, uh I got an interesting uh, stat on for that quick hit, too. Kind of crazy. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so um we're gonna get ready and, and get started in just a minute here. Um trickling in slowly. Uh, while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play the spiel. You all know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio-only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't wait. can't wait can't wait this one I, I thought was um, pretty cool. Um, I'm a big college, bas college basketball, college football fan. Um, I don't know how many of you are. In the chat, I know my man Steve is a big college football guy. Um, and I know there are, for those of you who are go college Irish. football fans, I know, go Irish. <laughs> I know there's definitely some um, Colorado fans out there. Well, I shouldn't even say Colorado fans, Coach Prime fans, right? Not there you actually, go. Better, Colorado. better, better term. Yeah. It's kind of weird to me, but okay. Um, so here's the deal. Um, last season, Colorado went what they went four and eight in there in Coach Prime, his first season as head coach at Colorado, right? So we remember beginning of the year, we we saw um it was all the hype and uh what is it first take went out there for their home games and undisputed went out there and all like all the different shows went out there and they had all the superstars and rappers and all that in the in the uh on the sidelines and Snoop was there and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and so it started off hot and then basically they struggled down the stretch. Why? Uh, Colorado wasn't, they weren't physical enough in the trenches. They weren't physical on the O line. Jadur Sanders was sacked. I think 52 times led the entire nation in uh, getting sacked last year. They weren't physical on the D run D line. Excuse me. People were running all over them, but their, their offense is crazy, right? Their pass offense is explosive. They don't run the ball extremely well, but um, their pass offense is crazy. Shadur Sanders is clearly the best quarterback in the country. 
And uh, he's got he's got outstanding players with him. Obviously, two way superstar Travis Hunter, um, who is in the lead at this point for the Heisman Trophy. I think he's I think the odds are like minus 500 right now for him as the Heisman Trophy leader. Um, so just just an incredible thing. And so here here's where I come in. Right. So talking about college football last year. I knew that the Pac-12 was dissolving and teams were going different places. And I want to say uh, Arizona, Arizona State, Arizona State, BYU, Utah, Colorado, I believe all went to the Big 12, right? And so what 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 happens there? I said last year, I said, listen, Big uh, Colorado has a legitimate chance to win the Big 12 next year because I, I really believed it based on what I was seeing. Uh, based, what? Hell no. Hell no. Okay. Oh, no, right, you cool. didn't say that. You I did say, say that, that last year. I, I'll I'll get the clip. I, sh I should have cut it and had it ready, but I you did say that last year because I heard I other things. You should have cut I it. I heard yeah. other things. I heard other things. That price is way too high. You need yeah, to sir, cut especially, it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Especially when he went and was talking shit about the media. Oh man, you went on a whole frenzy. I that doesn't have say anything. That. You to... never said that they was going to be worth. That doesn't nothing. have anything. What? Go cut the. Cut the clip. You 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 Cut really I'll it. find it. I will find it for you. Don't worry. Because I remember we had this conversation. I remember we us having this conversation. I said last year, as in last football season, we weren't talking about Colorado. You and me weren't talking about Colorado last football season. But I, I'll get it for you. No doubt. No doubt. Because it, I wasn't it's, here. It's, no dog in the fight. I'm only going by the last thing that you said, sir. I'm sorry. I don't. I so ain't go all I never back said in, anything in the about their ability. I never said anything about their abilities on the field. Did I agree with how um, how uh, Coach Prime handled that situation with the reporter? No, that has nothing to do with what I said they would do or not do on the field. So I don't I don't know how you we had this conversation, Bruce. Bruce, that has, we had this conversation, okay. Bruce. I, I don't make shit up, Bruce. We had this conversation, dog. Okay. And I remember right. you being remember. on your the Irish high mighty and saying that you know Colorado Colorado ain't gonna be ain't gonna be nothing. They don't have no running game. He keep getting sacked. You, you weren't the only one that felt that way. No, 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 no. You're telling me two no, years no, ago no. you said something totally no, last different. Last year I said it, but that's cool. I got, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Last year I said it. I'm going to find it for you. I got you. And I meant you to know, do it. The good thing about this program is that they um, keep your recordings. That's right. Mm -hmm. No, no. I, listen, yeah. I got yeah, it. We talked, about, we talked about them before. It's on the channel. Uh, uh, Mr. Transformer. We talked about Colorado before. and you it's on the channel. I'm going to get it for you. I'm gonna get it for you, no doubt. But, but the point don't is, delete the shit, bro. Don't can, delete it. <laughs> I can assure you, anybody listening yeah. that have been around this channel, I did say last year that uh, Colorado, and you know who could, you know who could vouch for me on that as well, Transformer Ryan can vouch for that. Because I, I oh said yeah, it yeah, because you do the you do the two. Yeah, you can vouch for that. But anyway, I did say that Colorado had a legitimate chance, and I believed that they were a contender to win the Big Twelve. And lo and behold. The Colorado Buffaloes are now two wins away from playing in the Big Ten, excuse me, Big 12 championship game, and they're favored in both. Kansas is no longer the team that we expected them to be under Lance Leipold this year. And Oklahoma State, I don't know what happened to them. Ali Gordon the third, he must be pissed he went back to school. He should have went to the league. But but the point is, they've got two not great teams. Oh, and seven. They have, yeah. Damn. Um, Colorado has gotten much better in terms of being more physical in the run game. Their run defense is better. It's in the top half of the country now. And, and we kind of saw that when they played against UCF because earlier this season, because UCF at the time was the number one rush team in the in the in the country, I think averaging about 370 rushing yards per game. That was around week four or five. And Colorado basically put a stop to that, right? So I said, okay. So remember, they have Warren Sapp as an assistant D-line coach now. Now you're seeing it. I think they're um, I want to say like third in the country in sacks over the last six games. But the point is Colorado is really stepping up. They're now eight and two. They win these next two games. They have an opportunity. They will play for the Big 12 championship and anything can happen there because if they win that as a power four conference champion, they will make the college football playoff. And that is going to be the biggest story in college football. Because think about how big of a story it was last year with only four wins, right? Imagine if, so two years ago, Colorado was one in 11, had an average um, margin of losing, I'm not even going to say victory, average margin of losing of 29 points per game. Worse than the Power Five, worse than America, cool. right? They were getting smoked. Coach Prime comes in there, turns this thing around. So um, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what happens here. One, because I said it was likely to happen, so 
we always like to be right. And two, because I think, again, the journalist in me says it'll make an incredible story if Colorado makes the college football playoff. So I got some clips here. Before I get into those, um, I'm going to start with Transformer because I started with G last time. What are your thoughts on what we are seeing from Colorado and what Coach Prime has built there in such a short time from such an absolutely horrible uh, program before they hired him? We are seeing what trust the process looks like. Mm. We're seeing what mm. trust and believe in me. Mm -hmm. And I will show you mm. better than I can tell you. Okay. When talking is just a wee bit too much, but the actions behind the words mm -hmm. are there in your face and you can't do nothing but respect them. Mm -hmm. That's prime to the fullest. Facts. Took a team that was one game, one, one game, mm -hmm. one game, not a, in a sense, they're pretty much one game away from being the Big 12 champs. One game away, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that that's that that speaks volumes, man. I mean, everything and all the pressure that was put on this team um when he got there, you know, we saw what he did at Jackson State, right? You know, we saw mm -hmm. him, you know, turn that friend that that school around and you know, make people talk about that team, right? Mm -hmm. Gets to Colorado, huge controversy on what he did when he walked into the walked into the door and said. Half y'all not even going to be here when the season starts. Y'all can go ahead and hit the portal if you want to, but I'm bringing in my boys, right? So does that, and not a great season, but to Colorado, much better season when you go out there and you have four wins, three more than what you did in the previous year, right? But to have this type of follow-up after your defensive line was atrocious, you can't stop the run. You're almost, you're almost like Dallas. You couldn't run the football and you couldn't stop the run. Those are two of your biggest weaknesses um, when it came to your team, but you addressed them. Um, Warren Sapp, what he's doing with that defensive line, he's really you know, getting these guys to fit, plug in those gaps, um, stop, stop, team from, stop teams from running all over them, and really putting his team in a chance of success. Um, offensive line has even gotten better. That was the other big bugaboo about um, the uh, the Colorado bus is that they couldn't protect them. You know, getting the ball mm -hmm. out quicker, making smarter right. plays, running the football um, effectively, mm -hmm. and things like that. We're starting to see that more and more and yeah. more, yeah. which is driving Shador Sanders to stop through the roof. Yeah. Because now we're getting to see like the number one quarterback coming out. Now he's like, dang, okay, this is what it looks like when he's protected. He's not getting sacked over and over and over and over. Well, he's look at the numbers fumbling. he put up last year, even getting killed. Like getting killed, right? Right. Right. But now we see he can – it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what that mm -hmm. line is. I can, mm -hmm. that, that, that kid can get it done, right? That just speaks volumes to that team, man. That that team is freaking uh, – I mean, uh, that team, I mean, that, that coaching staff, you know, the Sanders family and what they're doing over there, man, it's huge. It's huge for them. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for them to get in there. They could probably get smacked. Who cares? But, <laughs> like, that, but That's the thing. That's the thing. Like, like they, they could get smacked, but you're coming from 1-11 two years ago. Two years ago. College football playoff. Like, that's big. Um, Steve said, real quick, Steve, I wanted to respond to him. He says uh, the Big 12 is garbage, but yet they do have BYU, who's what? Um, a top 10 team in the college football playoff ranking, right? So, yes, not a great conference. Not the same without Texas and Oklahoma. No doubt about it. But they are still, you know, again, they have BYU, who I guess theoretically, if uh, – I guess it would be if Colorado wins out, it would be sure. Colorado and BYU for the um for the conference championship. But um G, go ahead, man. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Oh uh, man, um I think it's uh it just speaks dividends to you know the work that uh, Dion was able to put in. Um a lot of people and a lot of coaches, a lot of um uh, of his peers um didn't like how he was moving and they was vocal right. about it. Um um, Mr. Saban even went on wax and said some stuff that he probably shouldn't have said about the man. And so, um, to see the viewership, no one really knew what the hell who Colorado was. And I always went on this, winning this, and, and said if they win one more game this year than they did last year, that's yeah. a success for them. And to see you know talks of them winning the winning, winning that conference or the uh, Big Twelve, that's that's fucking awesome, man. Um, hats off <laughs> to him and that. And that team and and the way he did it, right? He did it with flash and flair and, uh, against you know the norm or against what people believe. Um, they talk about the transfer portal and how heavily he had to lean on it. Um, he came in talking about, hey, look, we building men here. You mm -hmm. know, some things that you never really see. Um, 
see um in the limelight and that he had it was america had front row seats to this mm-hmm. um, anything from the, the flare and flash of having like uh celebrities at the game and um and you, you start to integrate in social media with it, and you see the ticket sales rising. So not only is he bringing wins, he's bringing money to that to a place where mm-hmm. football was probably like the second best sport there. Like I, I don't know, maybe yeah, it's been a while. It was second best, Colorado. everything after that was yeah. Well, it, trash. It's been a while since Colorado was <laughs> yeah. legit. Um, I think yeah. they shared Michigan's last national championship. I think that was ninety seven. So yeah, and so so not see, like the um, See Prom come in and, and and be be and be able to be himself in a space that didn't accept him. Um, gotta take your hat off to it, man. I love it. I want to see more of it. He actually brought me back to college football. I kind of stopped watching it. Uh, so, but there's that, and I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's probably a whole lot of other people who, as soon as Prime decided after what he did at Jackson State, um, when he when he said he was going D one. I thought that I think that brought a lot of viewership and, and a big spotlight on that school. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. doubt. Um, yeah. So to the answer, Steve, real quick. Steve says, "Who is BYU beating? Who is Colorado beating?" So I'll, I'll say this, right? I'm not saying those guys have um, fantastic uh, schedules, right? However, however, a lot of people would say the same thing about Notre Dame outside of the opener in uh, at A and M. A lot of people would say, who has Notre Dame beaten, right? So so you get that. Um, at, at the end of the day, I think the point here is that you've seen a whole ton of improvement with Colorado. And one, one thing I wanted to speak to was, G mentioned like the flash and the glitz and the glamour. And yes, Coach Prime is going to bring that. However, everybody who talks about him talks about how this dude is an old school football coach. Like he believes in old school football tenants and discipline and physicality and all that stuff. So yeah, it looks flashy and they got a laser light show offense and all that. I always talk about it, but that team, the main difference is how much of a change you see in the physicality of this roster. You know what I'm saying? So um, uh, let's do this. Um, I got some, some stuff here I want to play and then uh, we'll come back and talk about it and then we'll, we'll wrap the show. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Joel Klatt, uh, Fox, Fox's number one uh, college football analyst. Uh, he's on the number one broadcast team with uh, Gus um, was, is, uh, Gus Johnson. I love that. I think they're an awesome broadcast team. Anyway, um, Joel Klatt, here he is talking about Colorado. Take it with a grain of salt that he is Colorado alum, but he is generally very objective about college football. He's You get a totally different slant than when you listen to ESPN talk college football, but that's a different thing. Here's Joel Klatt. Colorado's pretty freaking good. This is not the team that lost to Nebraska. This isn't even the team that lost to Kansas State. I think we have to leave room for the fact that this team has developed into a a top-tier team. And at its best, Colorado is the best team in the Big 12 right now. They're the most explosive. They're quality on defense. And that would be my next point. This defense, led by Travis Hunter on the outside, who does get an interception in that game, is incredibly disruptive up front. That was not the case a year ago. And, I mean, that's that's obvious. They lost the battle up front on almost all occasions last year. Both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. And now this defense, this defensive front is active. They're disruptive. And then, better yet, they're productive. And again, they were productive in this ballgame. Four sacks for Colorado, nine tackles for loss behind the line of scrimmage. And now you look up, and in their last six games, Colorado has 28 sacks. That's the third most in college football, only behind Ole Miss and Boise State. And Boise State's actually played one more game within that time frame. So I think it's it's time to stop thinking about Colorado as, as a flash in the pan, as a, a, a PR stunt. This team does things that are going to be very difficult to beat. And again, at their best, and every team does not play at their best all the time. And Colorado doesn't even play at their best, you know, for for an entire game, which Coach Sanders talks about a little bit. But at their best, they are the best team in the Big 12 because they've got the foundational pieces on defense to win the line of scrimmage pressure the quarterback, create disruptive plays, tackles for loss. They've got excellent cover guys in the back end, including Travis Hunter, who's likely going to be the Heisman Trophy winner if they continue to win. This is this is a team that is playing as good as anybody in the Big 12 and, and certainly deserves to be ranked, you know, right there around that 12, 13 mark, I think higher than what the AP should should uh, rank them or, or did rank them. 
part of that is that you get the foundational pieces that I've talked about, but then you also get this unicorn player in Travis Hunter. And and so just to button this up on Colorado, you're getting the things that you wouldn't expect, like their defensive dominance. And then you pair that with the best quarterback in the country in Shador Sanders and the best player in the country in Travis Hunter. And they're going to be very difficult to beat. They're eight and two. Um, they're, they control their own destiny to get to the Big 12 championship game. They control their own destiny to go to the college football playoff. It's quite something. It's quite something. All right, so what is that? What are we doing? That's that's unprofessional. That's unprofessional. You I can't agree. wear those. I agree. What are we doing? <laughs> this guy. Okay, I believe you. You got to believe. <laughs> Gotta yeah. believe, prime baby. I'm about to order Let's mine, though. Go buffs. I'm about to order you gotta mine. Gotta believe, bro. right? <laughs> I'm about to order mine. Oh boy, they they tough, sir. By the way, they tough. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah blenders.com, bro. Go ahead and get you a pair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We gotta My get bad. Bruce a pair Bruce? now since. We got to get Bruce a pair down since he on the bandwagon. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm, not a bandwagon guy. I'm good. All right. So, um, what Joe, what? <laughs> Distracting the hell out of me. I forgot what I was going to say. Prime, baby. It's prime, baby. Prime time. <laughs> prime time. Time to sign. Gee, man, what, you got on with, uh, what you got on with Joel Clad had to say, man? I think he yeah, gave a right. very objective breakdown on, on what's going on there. It didn't really say too much that we don't already know. You know, you're building, you're building the team from damn near nothing, right? And in your first year, you already won more games than they did the previous year, and now you, you know, you you about to win your um your your conference, Big Twelve. Um, so yeah, he said he talked a lot. He definitely talked a lot, but I think he kind of echoed a lot of things that we already know and said, right? Um. Warren Sapp, as you said, is doing an amazing job. You got the kids watching the film. They're getting better every week. Um, mm-hmm. And they, and they starting that culture. He's starting to build that culture there, um, which doesn't – it's not a it's not a, a, a microwave thing. It takes time. And um, mm-hmm. I think we're starting to see that. And I, I heard that we he's supposed to be getting, like, the number one – one of the number one quarterbacks next year. I heard that that's possible that uh, he's, yeah. he's trying to – I heard that. Yeah. I don't know – how far along they are in terms of whether or not he got him or not. But I think I heard something that, along the I think that was – for us, that was um that was a big, big deal because we wasn't sure if we had conversations about him going uh, to either the Saints, uh, Dallas, and kind of leaving and following his son. Um, but if they bring it in um, tier one talent again, it might – we we might have – we might see him um, – I don't know how long his contract is. And um, we might see him there for a lot longer than anticipated. So, could be interesting. Transformer, what you got on uh, Joel Klatt's um, commentary on Colorado? I mean, he's accurate, man. Um, start from the ground. Like the change is obviously there. Like we've seen, you know what he, what he's done with the entire program of the Colorado Buffs, right? And I, mm-hmm. I think I think one key detail is missing. Um, you know, we know Deion Sanders has a huge platform. All right. He's always putting everything on video, everything on black, everything good. He highlights. Right. Yes. He also uses that 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 program, that uh, platform to highlight the negative in our players and how we're looking to grow with our players. Um, If you follow him on Instagram, you see a lot of when he's he got all the players in the conference room. Right. He's putting up grades, reports, Mm -hmm. like stuff like that. Putting you on blast, right? Like, yeah, you're not doing like, what you're supposed to do. We're yeah. not going to show all the glam and the glory. Right. We're going to show that you're messing up and you skipping class, mm-hmm. missing right. class. Right. Like he, uh, he, uh, re, re, he was like reading them out loud. Uh, reports he's getting from teachers about players sitting mm-hmm. like somebody on the third row. This came from your teacher, right mm-hmm. here, and he's putting it on his platform. Like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there too because I need you guys to understand this is serious business. This is mm-hmm. what I mean, right? You know, I'm gonna use my platform for the good. But I also want to highlight how I'm making a man out of you, right? Like I'm that. teaching you, like, this is school, all right? You, mm-hmm. You're in college first, right? You know what I mean? Getting you an education while you're also becoming that that athlete, right? You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. there's a better chance that you're going to get a degree than you're making it to the league. That's the mm-hmm. way that, that's the way college football works. 
right? right. So I'm, you're going to leave here with a degree. That's for sure, right? And then you could possibly make the league by the way we're doing with our program. So I just, mm -hmm. I like what he's doing, man. He's building from the foundation up, um, you know, making, turning grown, I mean, turning boys into grown men, right? So absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I did love what he said, man. I, I did like Yeah, that. I liked it a lot, especially, you know, just breaking down how the building and, and the change you're seeing in the way the defense is playing, et cetera. Um, also got a little bit more commentary, got some commentary from, uh, Colin Cowherd on his podcast, Colin Cowherd podcast, along with uh, former Alabama quarterback and national champion Greg McElroy. So um, definitely uh, wanted to wanted to play that for you guys about mm -hmm. a little over three minutes, and then we'll uh, come back. And then I got one more clip, and then we'll we'll get out of here. Uh, you know, it's not an it's not a legitimate, well healed, strongly capitalized college football program. Dion has made it really fun and deserves all the credit. I think. I think Dion would take the cowboy job and Shadur Sanders, I think he's gonna be a, a really good pro. When you watch Colorado, I would love to see them get in because I think they have arguably the two best college football players. What do you make of Colorado? I didn't buy them at all early in the season. And now I watch yeah. them and I'm like, Warren Sapp's done a pretty good job. They're pretty stout up front. <laughs> I kind of buy them because I just think if you have the best college quarterback, it's probably worth two touchdowns in college football. Probably. Um, I think that Shador is probably the best pro prospect right now. I agree with you on the shot clock in the pocket and the pocket mobility stuff and the awareness of the rush is is something that I am concerned yeah, about yeah. as it translates to the next level. I, I just... I, Having been back there uh, and been in the NFL pocket, like there are very few clean pockets. Now it's a lot cleaner now because of the RPO and some of the stuff that you, you know you just can do a lot of different things. And one, you can't hit quarterbacks, so that's beneficial as well. Uh, but I look at Colorado right now, and they have 33 sacks. That's made them different. They're in the top half of the country in rush defense, which is a huge difference from a year ago. Um, they always had wideouts. The offensive line has been fine, but they really at the same time, have they played a defense that's anywhere near the caliber of what they would see when they get in the college football playoff? No. And I think the answer to that is no. And, and I, I think they would struggle. Um, can you make it a perimeter game, make it a catch and run game and their weapons against your weapons. And let's see what happens. And Travis Hunter has two picks and locks down one side of the field and, you know, and goes off for a buck 60 in the air. Could that happen? Absolutely. Um, but ultimately I don't think it would end very well given the sheer quantity of NFL level defensive players that every playoff team at the top of the leagues will be able to trot out onto the field. So uh, I, I would love it. I've been shamelessly rooting for them. Um, one, because every former player thinks they could coach, you know, just not many of us get that opportunity. So to see Dion make the most of this opportunity gives all of us hope that maybe we could do it too. Yeah. That's for, that's one. And two, I think it's just been cool to see that it doesn't have to be done a certain way. There is not, there is this expectation that this tried and true way, this is how you build a program. This is how you do it. And it's not necessarily always going to be the same. It depends on the place. It depends on the coach, depends on the personality. And it's been refreshing to see some, somebody that's done it a little different. Uh, and that has not made a lot of friends along the way. Like he's kind of, you know, gone anti-establishment yeah. and say, this is how we do it. And, so be it if you don't like it. And that to me is refreshing. So um, I'm happy for him and I hope they went out. I'm, I'm not going to apologize in saying that. And I hope we see him in the playoff. So uh, I, I like that um, McElroy kind of giving um, some in-depth uh, thought to, to the, to the commentary there. And I just, I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity to uh, hear what he had to say there. And I think what really stuck out to me, stuck out to me, excuse me, there's a lot of people in the in the sports media mainstream who didn't necessarily have a lot of kind things to say about what was going on and the way Dion was going about it and now they're kind of forced to and it, it's you know it, it's good to hear that you know he's being acknowledged for what he has done and I am uh, very much looking forward to uh seeing what he's able to do again still got two games left 
um, to win before uh, playing for the Big 12 championship. And then he's got to win that. And then a legitimate shot to be into – well, not a legitimate shot. If he wins the Big 12, they'll be in the college football playoff. So very much uh, looking forward to, to to seeing if they can get that done. I think that would just be super exciting for the sport. Um, even though they haven't played against elite defenses, I still think that offense is really, really good. And it's it's a pro offense and it's a pro defense. That's one of the things I actually love about the way Coach Prime has built this team, at least from the coaching staff. He's got a lot of people that are are and were professionals, and, you know, in the NFL. So his players are getting, you know, highest level coaching. And I, I think that's pretty cool. So um, I like that. No, um, I, 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 I like that. You know, like like you said, um, he's he's definitely getting his flowers. I would love for this. Dion needs to go to Dallas. It's going to go to Dallas. Stop, talk to stop. Yeah, <laughs> Just, uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Um, logistically for uh, the quarterback perspective, because if he goes there, you know, Shadu is going to go there. They literally just gave Dak Prescott all that money. Mm -hmm. Just gave it to him. So that means mm -hmm. Shadu is going to have to sit at least two to three years before mm -hmm. they even consider moving off of that money. I was about right? to say, so, unless they can find a way to, to trade Dak and somebody take on the bulk of that money. That which highly I doubt it. Would, would, exactly. we, just, we just seen what he looked like. Like, damn, y'all paying $60 million for that? Uh, we can go in the draft and get that right. Mm -hmm. We can go and get a Jordan Love. Like we can go and get, we can go and draft and get that. Because what was Dak Prescott? A fourth round pick. We can uh, get a yeah. fourth round pick and get a decent quarterback, right? So, right. Um, plenty of quarterbacks that's coming out of the, um, coming out of the draft in the up and coming years that that we're going to be um, that you know other teams are going to have a better opportunity with than paying sixty million for a thirty year old quarterback who has nothing on his resume. Um, right. You know, right. no accolades to speak of. Every time he right. goes to the playoffs. If there's mm -hmm. no run game, he gets destroyed. Now we're seeing when there is no run game in the regular season, he gets destroyed. Um, you know, what what do I have? Um, also, man, it's just to me, it's just a worse fit because why Jerry Jones is the face, right? He's the face of that franchise. He always wants to be in the highlights, always wants to be in the commentary, be in the cameras, and all that. When Prime comes over there and this happens. Where does the attention go to? Coach it goes Prime. to the man. It goes to the man with these bright shades on. Jerry mm -hmm. not gonna like that. <laughs> Jerry no. not gonna like that. That's Jerry why to, it's not a fit. I I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. He's not going to like that at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Like you know, like damn, he's getting all the attention. He's getting all the praise because right. what's gonna what's gonna happen? They're gonna bring up Deion Sanders' track record. What have you mm -hmm. done for the sport lately? The game of football. Yeah. Oh, I went to Jackson State. Make them a uh, make them a conference uh, competitor, right? Mm -hmm. The Colorado mm -hmm. went to Colorado, made them a conference competitor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming to the NFL. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make Dallas a, a a conference competitor, right? To the Super Bowl. Because what has Jerry done over the last 25, 30 years? I wait. Put three three playoff wins. <laughs> three playoff wins in tw in 25, 30 years. Twenty. I think mm -hmm. it's twenty eight. Twenty eight years, mm -hmm. right? Come on now, all the attention is going to sway to Dion, and Jerry not going to like that. Jerry would have to, and I don't mean uh, death on anybody, he would have to pass away for that to happen. Right, right, and right. And it have to fall to his son, and his son like, all right, Dion, bro, you got it. <laughs> I'm just the owner. Yeah, right. Take care of your business. Mm -hmm. It's on you, but yeah. Nah, facts. That's what I got, man. I, I, um, I partially agree, right? Like, in the beginning, I talked about, you know, the, the, the bones and the infrastructure is there. Right. The fans are going to be there. If Jerry really is about making money, he's he's already seen what uh, Dion has done in Colorado. Right. So imagine you bring those fans over um, that followed you there over to Dallas. And now you have a team um, that may or may not compete at the same time. If it's a money, if it's a money thing, he didn't he didn't gave up so much money, man, in all those losing seasons. Um he can sit the door down for a year because he know that Prime is going to bring the glitz and the glamour, and he's going to bring bodies. Um, so Fact. from a profit standpoint, he, he, I mean, it's not far fetched. We talking money, but you know, Jerry's not that smart anyway. He gave Dak all that money, so um, we've seen it before. Yeah, I would be, I would be interested to see uh, if if that were to happen, like. 
how how do they how do they deal with that quarterback situation? And and also I, I think I've said this before. I don't like the idea of Shadur being under his pops his whole life. I I, I just I just don't. At some point, a man got to spread his own wings. And, he's and not even 25 yet. Okay. He's not 25 yet. Yeah, he's not 25. What does that mean? That means a lot. 25? Shador? I, I said he's not 25 yet. That means oh. a lot. But, gee, I know, you, I know you've seen 19, 20-year-olds in the combat zone. So, like, I really don't buy that he's not 25 yet. Thing. They, they playing a kid sport, though, at the same time. It was a kid sport. I, I understand what you're saying, but at the okay. same time, like, it's doable, bro. Like they, I mean, both of them on the same team. I know we don't want to see that. We don't want to see it, but it's not like it's not. It's far fetched. It's so far fetched. We just no, like Denver not. did. Denver did with um uh, uh Russell mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. You know, Super Bowl winning quarterback kicked his ass to the side real quick for their next it, pick. I don't think it, it, it's not. It's not doable. Dirty politics. They started with dirty politics, and the next thing you know, he was on the side. He was. In the still on the Steelers bench, so um, I think the the fans has already expressed their um, displeasure, or you know yes. how how pissed off they are. And mm-hmm. in his conference, mm-hmm. the Cowboys are damn near last next to Daniel. The Daniel Jones is playing better than Dak, so mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. Like what the what the Commanders are doing right now, I know Jerry want to make a change. I know he do, and I don't think but that that's want to make a change. He shouldn't. Anyway, you're right. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I we agree. talked about it. The infrastructure is there, but at the same time, like the the brain matter doesn't exist. So his decision making is is yeah. terrible, and that's why they're in the position that they're in. Um, I'm just right. saying he's he's a billionaire. So like, right, right, all right. So um, the last the last one I'm gonna play. Um, I, I spoke earlier about people having to kind of eat crow about Dion and because they were, you know, tough on him the way he was going about things. So it's actually funny. I want to say, I, I think it was last week I was on, well, I, you guys weren't here. I was on. And um, one of the things Bruce said was that uh, he wanted to hear what Whitlock, Jason Whitlock had to say about Dion because he's one of the guys in the sports media that's been really hard on coach prime in terms of not, uh, uh, not agreeing with the way he's going about things. And, uh, <laughs> how he's going about things and and all that so i wanted to um uh get a clip and this will be the last clip we play for tonight and this is uh what jason whitlock was actually forced to say on his show not forced but you know <laughs> Coach Prime and, and the play of the buffaloes have kind of pushed him into a corner where he had to say this so check it out uh, i'm being inundated over the weekend uh with people suggesting i owe Deion sanders an apology the uh, Buffaloes are now eight and two. They destroyed uh, Utah, forty-nine to twenty-four, I believe, forty-nine to twenty-five, something like something like that. They, they destroyed Utah, and I made the bet that if they finish, uh, I predicted that they would lose two of their next three games. Now that means it, or or I would go to their bowl game dressed out in Dion gear and Colorado gear. Uh, now. They have to lose this week to Kansas, which I was counting on. I was counting on them losing to Utah and Kansas. But now they got to lose to Kansas and Oklahoma State at the end of the year. And Oklahoma State's been awful. Kansas hasn't been any good either, but they do have a quarterback who could cause them problems. Anyway, people are arguing that I owe Dion an apology, that I was wrong. And, And I am going to be transparent and say, I'm wrong, but I'm not apologizing. I don't owe Dion an apology. I, I, I'm wrong about what their record would be this year. I'm wrong about how much um, improvement they would show this year. And, I, and not just before the season, but after they lost to Nebraska, after they should have lost to Baylor, I was real confident that the wheels were going to fall off. And the wheels did not uh, fall off. This team has improved throughout the course of the season, which I didn't expect a Deion Sanders coach team to improve over the course of the season. I was wrong about that. I thought it would look a lot like last year where Deion's team did not get better over the course of the season. They actually got worse. Things got tougher. They began to crack last year. That is not the case this year. Hats off to Deion. Hats off to Colorado for that. They have more character as it relates to football 
competition and just grinding it out and the work of getting better than I gave them credit for. Thoughts. I, I was really surprised by that. He, uh, you know, he said what he had to say. He said what was, um, he said what was appropriate. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this? <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Um, so, Oops. so, so, so. <laughs> Ja Rule, man. <laughs> ja Rule, oh, I man. It. Oh, man. Yeah, you missed it. That's why, bro. Um, yeah, that, that's <laughs> Master Hater right there in the flesh, bro. Um, um, he just, that's just how his commentary rolls, man. Some people think he's um, subjective, but I just, it's just a constant narrative of him. And his bullshit, man, and that's just, that's what his platform built off of. Um, I don't see how he's still relevant, but who am I? Transform. Oh, I mean, you, G said it. <laughs> I was like, who gives a damn? But he's like, what? Okay, you ain't got to get a man an apology. That's fine. yeah, man. He trying to kiss his ass now at the. Yeah, he tried to kiss his ass now. He dragged yeah. him through the mud, man. No. I don't I don't think it was a matter of trying to kiss him. He nothing. didn't stand on business when he made the statements that he made. First Bump that honor the bet. Now you got to yeah. pull up. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's what he's, you know, if it comes to that, he will honor the bet. So I, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be funny. But, yeah, I just wanted to uh, – I, I like that, you know, what, what Colorado has done has, you know, really forced a lot of people to stand up and take notice. And so, yeah, that was the last thing. Um, I had to say about uh, Colorado tonight and what they have accomplished uh, thus far. And I'm again, I'm looking forward to seeing them hopefully win these next two games. Stay focused. Keep your eye on the ball uh, or eye on the prize, whatever you want to call it. Uh, win these next two They're games both. to the uh, second. <laughs> They're both. Don't drop that. <laughs> right, right. The, ball too. <laughs> the, the conference championship. So, um, uh, Steve. I I can agree with some of that, Steve. I, I hear what you're saying. And I think there's – the thing is, even if you don't necessarily agree with the bulk of what someone is saying, that doesn't mean that – that doesn't mean that they're – that they can't ever say anything worth listening to, right, or worth, worth hearing or say anything that makes any sense. I'm, I'm big on that, right? It's really hard for somebody to be so egregious to me that I won't – that I can't find any value in anything they say. So, you know, I, I try to be objective and somewhat neutral. So I, I do, I do listen to what he has to say. There are things that he says that I agree with wholeheartedly. There are many that I do not, but, um, like Skip Bayless, pretty much 95% of what he says is, I just have to same thing. I don't like, okay, think it's a whole bunch of bullshit. Like, oh, okay, Skip. Yeah. I don't think so. it makes sense. Oh my gosh. Oh, Oh my gosh, he agreed with somebody. I'm glad you do. You agree with him because I don't. I <laughs> I've never seen any value, and I don't have time to listen so, to. So so G, what I will say is, I was just about to say that means you don't listen because I guarantee you, and we could talk offline. <laughs> oh, that he, I yeah, guarantee yeah. you, he says some things that you would be in agreement with. I guarantee. Yeah. You. I like this his WNBA approach. Like he had a clip that was um, interesting. Yeah, talking about the WNBA, I, I did like that clip. Yeah, but some of some of it, I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, whoa, what he was saying, yeah. but I, I just yeah, like, he, I like he kept it. He a hater. He a hater, yeah. and he, you know, he hide behind his mic, man. I think some of the shit he said, he ain't gonna say in like certain folks' face. Like, well, no, no. So I will, I will disagree yeah. with that. It's easy. Not, it's easy to talk shit in the booth, but when you, you know, what I'm saying, you dragging the motherfucking public, and then they pull up on you. It's like, oh see, man, I ain't really mean to say that. But see, no, because that's that's happened to him before. Because what we're forgetting is that this dude is not just him make his bones on being a, a podcast or a radio guy. This guy's a longtime sports writer that's been in locker rooms. So when he says stuff, and believe me, as we know, he said a lot of stuff over the years that pissed a lot of people off. He had to go, he had to stand on that when people ran up on him. So, you know, it is what it is. But again, I'm not trying to convince you to uh to like him or like his approach or like what he's, you know, what, like what he's, uh, has to say, what I personally, I personally believe is that as egregious as someone may be, that doesn't mean they're wrong all the time. There are things yeah. that they say that make sense and yeah. that are worth listening to. So well, I, I, just, I like that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But, um, I want to open the lines up. Uh, you, you think we got any calls on this? 
Um, um, all right. I'm going to give about five minutes. I'm going to give yeah. about five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and oh. open the lines up. 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. Got five minutes if anybody wants to call in, have anything to say uh, regarding Colorado, Coach Prime, what he's done, what you think the future may be, what you think they're capable of the, for the remainder of this season. Or if you need to get them Jones, you know what I'm saying? Go on oh, blenders, them, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go on blenders, get you them primes. You know I mean? Get them prime 21s. You know what I mean? Go get you them Jones. Mm. Mm. Right. I'm getting, get this is how, you know, get them sponsors. <laughs> prime, come and sponsor me, baby. <laughs> I got you, bro. I'm a believe. I believe. Mm-hmm. Boy, Lincoln Nation, boy, you don't like Whitlock, boy. We see it. A lot of people don't. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people hey, don't. Very, very yeah. true. Very, very yeah. true, though. Yeah, clown. You're not wrong. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> oh, clown. Well, one thing I'll say, I find it interesting. Like, um, like one thing, one term I don't use. Okay, we'll we'll get back there. Let's take this call. Bruce, what's good, my man? I know y'all tired of hearing me tonight, but fuck it. I'm on, yeah. I'm on, yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, 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 Bruce, stop that with that damn Jason Woodlock love shit, man. You got a bromance. Stop, guy, stop, man. stop, 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 stop. Bruce, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Bruce, 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 chill, chill, chill. Hold on. All right. This is this is one thing that really antagonizes me. Okay. And what what that is is, what that is is in modern society, you either gotta be all the way one direction or all the way the other. And if you don't detest somebody, you love them. That's not how that works. Okay. Bruce number two. Turn your radio down in the back. I mean, turn us down in the back, bro. Hold on, hold on. I don't know. Every time he calls it echoes, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's echoing bad now. Listen, man, it's nothing on the on the back. I don't know. It's my might be my cheek. Y'all hear me now, bro? Are you on speaker? Yeah, no, it's when it's when we I'm talk. Sure. Yeah, it's when we talk. Oh. We get a we get kickback. Yeah. Okay, okay, y'all get kickback. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, listen. Can y'all hear me better now? Yeah. No, no, no. It's not you. Who's number two? It's us. Oh, okay. So when we talk, like like I, I can hear myself repeating back to myself. <laughs> Is it still the same thing? Yeah. 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 Hold on. Damn it. Are you on speakerphone? Can y'all hear me better now? Are you on speakerphone? I can hear you. That's fine. Okay. I think it worked now. I think it's better. Were we on speaker the whole time? No, we wasn't. Mm -mm. Yeah, I wonder. That's weird, though. But but go ahead. My bad. I I just wanted to cut that out because it was good. No, no. Go ahead, bro. No, I, I was just saying, man, like, it's not about. It's not about Whitlock love. It's about everybody, no matter how egregious, will will have something to say that's worth value. And yeah, he says a lot of wild stuff. I get it. He says a lot of wild stuff. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have anything to say worth, worth value. And in this particular situation, I found it worth value to demonstrate uh, the level of achievement that Coach Prime has done, Dion, at Colorado over the last two years to force someone who has consistently, you know, uh, uh, derided him and his program to be on the radio and to give him flowers like that. So I thought it was valuable for this particular topic to play that, um, uh, to play that segment. That's what I'm saying. So it's not about, it's not about Whitlock love. It's about being objective. And that's the thing I strive to be constantly. Oh, that's what it is. Cause you like you seem like you be taking up for the guy when you talk about he was in the locker room standing up the guys and all this. Like damn. <laughs> well, no, I was I was I was giving more information because what G said was it's easy to hide behind a mic and say whatever, but when dudes are in your face, you can't say nothing. And so what I was doing was saying, well, no, this guy is not a radio guy for his whole career or a podcast guy for his whole career. He was actually out there like doing it, doing it. And so that it I, I can tell you. I've been in an NFL locker room. Those are some big dudes, <laughs> right? And hey, so, bro. to right to oh, to Chris, bro, 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 bro. Oh. that's big crazy. Dudes. That's okay, big, crazy. some big oh, bros in there, bro. Oh, right. So to criticize <laughs> those guys and then have to go stand in he front. Said of he was them. in a locker room, though. When them dudes, when <laughs> them dudes, <laughs> yeah. messed it up a little bit. When yeah. they're angry and they're upset and running up on you, why you write this or why you write that? 
you know, you you gotta have some you, you gotta have some intestinal fortitude to do that. So that's that's what I was speaking to when G said it's easy to just sit there and talk and hide behind a mic. I was like, nah, not so, quite. So so no no, no 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 hold on. Uh, breaking news, breaking news. Uh, breaking news. Breaking news. Connecticut as the winningest college college basketball coach <laughs> of all time, he gets a road sign. I just wanted to let y'all know that. Breaking news though. But go ahead. <laughs> hey, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this real quick, Bruce. I'm not yeah, going to film it long or not. So you agree with what Jason Woodlock was saying about Andrew Reese all those times? That's a whole mm. different topic, man. We're not I'm even... I'm just saying this, this yes or no. Did no, you no, agree no, 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 no. with that's what that, he was saying about Andrew Reese? That's a whole different topic, man. Not even... Not I even know, I know I'm not... You're not going to get into the topic. It's a yes or no question. Did you agree... But what he was saying about Angel Reese all those times. That's all I want to know about. Yes or no? Did you agree with him? That's that's not that simple. So I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna delve into uh, that. It's not that simple. Yeah. And and I also actually, also Bruce from B more, <laughs> I I noticed very specifically the player that you brought up. So they let's absolutely. just absolutely yeah, yeah. So there's so listen, so there's listen. going to be there's going to be no objectivity in reference to I her got from you. you. I got you. <laughs> but we're talking about Mr. Jason Woodlock, mm -hmm. Whitlock right now, right? Mm -hmm. What he was saying yeah. about Dion. Yes. But I just want you, I just want you just a yes or no. You ain't got to get to no details. Did you agree with him on how he slandered and trashed Angel Reese? Reese's game and how she how she portrays herself in, a, in the media, social media world. Did you agree on his opinions that he had about her? Yes or no? You ain't got to get into nothing. We can say, man, some of it, but not all. You can say that too. We'll do it. All right, let's, we'll let's, do let's, it. Let's, let's let's do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this simple for you, okay? We'll One, yeah. that's not a yes or no question. Two, go back through the channel. I actually have like a serious deep dive breakdown that I did on Angel Reese um, okay, like, I, 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 before I, before she got drafted. So go check that out. Here, what I have to say that'll help you. Okay, two number two, mm -hmm. I, real quick. No skip skip Bayless. A slander on this on his on his um podcast, man. That's my that's my man. I love Skip. Skip put a lot of brothers on in position, man. You gotta get Skip his props. You no, know I mean he, he don't say dumb shit. He Skip them put a lot of brothers on. That what they gotta do with you? You, you yeah. saying dumb stuff? I think you can still I think be stupid. Two things can be true, bro. I'm transformer. What what? <laughs> A lot of that shit trolling. You know, Skip be fucking with motherfuckers, man. You know, Skip a troll for real. All that shit he do, it's just, just for entertainment. But Skip the same thing Bruce be doing. He got a good sports knowledge. He got a good, he got a good sports knowledge. You, so y'all like Skip? Do, do I say? like Skip? That's your question? So y'all like Skip? I thought, was talk, I thought you called to talk about Colorado. I'm just talking about Colorado. Yeah, I thought that's what you Because when I was listening, y'all said something about Skip. I'm just I'm standing no slander of Skip Bayless. Okay. As far as Colorado, I think uh, Dion is doing a great job. I think um, so, too. I think he's doing a, a miraculous. He's doing a great job in Colorado. Um, the difference between the first year and the second year is, uh, is tremendous. Um, I think I think, I think think Warren Sapp plays a huge part in the defensive improvement. I got I don't see nobody checking Colorado. They got their four wide receivers. They got they going all four of them going to the league. All four of them, good. Can't nobody check Colorado. If the, if you, if, if the line gets Shador Sanders, time he gonna run the table like Cam Newton did when he was at Auburn that year. Don't get, remember I said that. Okay, so remember I said okay. if the line holds up and gets Shador Sanders time. <laughs> they gonna run the tape. Can nobody check them that's, on offense? That's the problem. I don't know. I don't know that they can. I don't know that right. that line can uh, can hold up when they go uh, against the better defensive teams. We'll see though. Um, but but the other thing is real quick, and then I'll let you go. When you run in those five receiver sets that you talked about, or four and five receiver sets, what happens is now you don't have anybody back there to protect. You don't have anybody back there to block. So if those things don't develop the way they're supposed to, right? And and yeah. he has to take a little longer. The offensive line may not hold up, right? And even yeah. if you if you go four out, right? Personally, right. me I, and maybe because I'm a Notre Dame fan, I prefer right. more power sets like a tight end or maybe even two tight ends. You got to have somebody be able to chip and block when those um 
when those better teams send the blitzes. Because like Kirby Smart, he sends the blitz, right? Uh, Texas, yes. they send the blitz. So you got you got really good teams like that. So we'll we'll see what type of we'll see what type of adjustments can be made when, yeah, when it comes they out. Blitz, so. They blitz, listen, they come in that bullshit and try bitch. Colorado with the four wide receivers they got. I think the best wide receiver they got is the, the big tall. What was his name? Or we getting the jump balls all the time. Is that Webster? No, I think Webster, Webster. Webster's a little. Yeah, Webster, Webster, Webster beats too. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Number fourteen. Um, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember his name though. M- but, Miller. But the, Miller. Ball, back the end no, Shepard. 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 Yeah. Shepard's the other one. Yeah, Shepard's the other one. Yo, they got full NFL wide receivers when they offense, yo. Jimmy Horn, Jr., Travis, Shepard, and Wick Man. But but again, again, and I'm not I'm not saying they're not legit. We will we will have to wait and see until they line up against a defense that has an elite secondary. For instance, right? I you probably right. don't want to hear this. Notre Dame has arguably the best secondary in the country. You line up against oh, them right. and you get busy. Or or you line up against Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, Texas. You, you, we got to see it against a real defense and out to Penn State. And I'll tell you what, we may see that once these guys get into playoff. But it's, you know, right. one game at a time. We still got three games left and hopefully it happens because I would love to hey. see him in the playoff. I think it'd be fantastic. It's great you for college football. Will, you think Kyle will pull it off? Is it? Say again? You think they can pull it off? Pull what off? Win the <sighs> Yeah, no, win it. You think they can win it? Well, they the, can, whole, the whole probably, thing. The problem is you got to win four games yeah. now. You got to yeah, win four in the nah. most. That makes it a lot harder. This ain't what it used to be. So I I would bet against it, but it would be awesome to see if it happened. I would not be mad, but I would bet it's against it if I was a gambling man. It's no definitive powerhouse this year. That college football is wide open. Georgia not what they once were. No. Miami, I think, ragged. I mean, this, it's this, not more this, parody. This, yeah. I think Oregon's the favorite. Not because they're number one, but I think, I think they're Hell. probably the best overall team. Oregon is legit. But still, come on in. They, they beat Ohio. Did they beat Ohio State this year? Yeah. But still, it ain't. Okay, all game. After all, who else? It's up for grabs. Who? Who? Yeah, There's nah. not no real true powerhouses this year. So, I think I, I, think, I, think, I think Texas is legit, too. Texas is that they're a real good team. Uh, we'll, we'll see what it is, though. We'll see. Still got a few games to play it out, so we'll see. But um, oh, yeah. I'm going to let you go, go Bruce, man. I appreciate the call. Me the phone, man. I hate when y'all do that over here, man. Hey, man. I got get... stopped at your Transformer, man. Hey, we got we got to run, bro. We got to run. Wait, 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 how did you get involved hey, in this, G? Man, I appreciate I'm, I'm you. Mess with this I will catch up with your brother. All right, brother. Thank all you right. for the support all the time. All right, Bruce. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bruce, crazy man. Bruce, crazy. All right, team. Um, I guess I guess that's it, huh? So we'll uh we'll leave it right there, and uh. I know everybody got early mornings. Everybody broke off. So <laughs> we're going to leave it right here. Thank you so much for uh, calling in. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Thank you for uh, rocking with us in the chat. If you haven't already, you know what time it is. Please click that like and subscribe button and uh, make sure you uh, share the show out to other people that you know who might uh, enjoy the sports talk. And we will leave it right there. We'll be back with you Saturday night for another episode of Format Podcast Live. Thanks again for joining us. Have a good night. Everybody be safe and we'll see you next time. We out. Peace. Peace.